Hello, good morning and welcome everybody. I am Jason, your MC for the next two days. We are super excited uh, to be organizing the first ever Modern Data Stack Conference. We're here to share, we're here to learn, we're here to build community and talk about what other data professionals are doing. We're very excited. Today is gonna to be focused on analytics and business and then day two tomorrow will be focused more on the engineering side. Uh, I wanna start by thanking all of our gold, silver and contributing sponsors. Uh, the gold sponsors to name them are Google Cloud, Snowflake, Looker, DBT, and AWS. We're super excited to have their support, super excited for you to check them out as the conference goes on. At this point, I want to introduce our co-founder and COO, Taylor Brown. Take it away, Taylor. Thanks, Jason. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. I am pumped to be here with each of you today. Uh, my name is Taylor Brown. As Jason said, I'm the co-founder and COO here at Fivetran. And I'm excited to welcome you to the first ever moder modern uh, data stack conference. Let me just share my screen here. All right. So uh, there's been so much work for days, weeks, months, heck, even years to make this happen. In 2012, when George and I first started Fivetran, I never imagined we'd host a conference of this size, and I definitely never thought it would be virtual. But if life give you, gives you lemons, you got to make lemonade. Uh, so it's exciting. It's an exciting undertaking for Fivetran and the data community, and I'm excited that we were able to actually pull it off. Great job, everyone. We have 2,500 registrants. We have 32 speakers and 26 sponsors uh, for today and tomorrow. Pretty amazing what we were able to pull together in such a short period of time. Speaking of our sponsors, I'd like to express my sincere appreciation to everyone who helped make this event possible. Truly, we couldn't have done it without each and every one of you. I appreciate all of your commitment to this conference, but even more importantly, I appreciate your commitment to the community of the modern data stack as a whole. Our sponsors have also helped build our amazing conference agenda. We have a great lineup of speakers and sessions for you to take part in. At this point, I would also like to extend a huge thank you to our talented speakers. I believe their diverse knowledge and creative insights will spark new ideas and progress the data community even further. All right, before we dive into the, the fun content, uh, we've got a few items of housekeeping to optimize your time and experience here at the conference. So hold with me. First, we have a great platform for you to customize your agenda to not miss out on anything. I'd recommend you take a minute to do this. Second, we have a jam packed two days with some awesome content. We've organized each day towards a different subject area. So as Jason was saying, day one is data analytics and day two is data engineering, pretty simple. While I know that it's a little hard to network during a virtual conference, uh, definitely harder than an in-person conference, I think we should still give it our best. So you can share your thoughts and have discussions in our public forums, or you can message attendees and sponsors directly via your inbox. I implore you to do both and maximize this networking opportunity, lemons lemonade. As another layer of added interaction, you have the ability to submit questions and answer polls during the speaking sessions. Your questions can be submitted via the chat function and you will be directed to answer polls throughout the session. Finally, surveys will also be sent at the conclusion of each day so you can provide feedback to help us elevate for next year. Next, we have a point system in our platform. So as you interact throughout the platform, you'll be awarded points. Whether you connect with a sponsor, participate in a poll, or simply update your profile picture, you'll receive points throughout the conference. At the end, the attendee with the most points will have the opportunity to select a nonprofit they'd like to donate to. Final piece of housekeeping, we ask that throughout the Modern Data Conference, you please just be respectful of others. This is a collaborative environment that we hope will elevate your knowledge and your experience and not hinder it. If you have any concerns, please email chris at fivetran.com or you can email me at any time about anything. Uh, I'm just taylor at fivetran.com. 
So housekeeping out of the way, what is the modern data stack? Why are we so passionate about it? Why are we even holding this conference? At a grand scale, the modern data stack is the evolution from an old system of brittle tools, broken processes, and reliance on relic-like systems that require consistent or constant maintenance and QAing to a modern data stack of tools and systems that automates, simplifies, and speeds up a company's ability to get their data and make strong, sound business decisions from it. Basically, the data stack is evolving with the sharp increases in technology and needs, and we're all helping to shape it. So what is the modern data conference then? It's a collection of people, tools, and systems that power the work that you all do every day. And that is why we created the schedule the way we did, dedicated to the largest group of people who live and breathe data in the modern data stack, data analysts, data engineers, and data scientists. Each day is dedicated to you, to learning from your peers about how they tackle their biggest challenges, to challenge each other on the future of our work and our industry, and to come together to push each other to drive our respective organizations forward. In the spirit of driving this collaboration, we have talks encompassing building data stacks from a technical perspective with companies like Dialpad, Fastly, and Hashmaps, establishing data organizations that can thrive off using this technology with Peloton, Data Culture, and Drizzly, and driving business outcomes with uh, companies like Clary, Innerworks, Snap Inc., Old Castle, TuneCore, and more. It's a fantastic lineup. And if that's not already super obvious, we here at FiveTran are super excited about the modern data stack. Data and the massive opportunity and the changes happening around it is honestly what drove George and I to start FiveTran in the first place. It's been so much fun watching the industry grow and evolve over the past eight years. It's been so much fun partnering with all of you on this journey. Many of you from conception to massive company alongside us. It's been amazing to watch and help contribute to the real innovation and growth that this industry is driving. For example, our friends at Snowflake saw an absolute avalanche of success with the largest IPO in software history, already reporting 3,400 customers earlier this year. Hard to miss that one. Gartner reports that public cloud revenue for, is forecast to grow 6.3% in 2020 to total of 258 billion Clearly the move to more remote work is speeding up the need to modernize faster and than ever before. And the growth is only gonna continue with the cloud data warehousing market projected to grow over 34 billion in 2025. And the community is rising to meet this growth. The amazing DBT Slack community has over 7,000 active people sharing best practices on everything from modeling to troubleshooting. The Apache Spark community sees over 2,000 contributors writing an insane amount of code, over 800,000 lines. And finally, here at Fivetran, we've welcomed more than 600 logos in the past year alone on the tail of an exciting new round of funding. It's been one heck of a year. So I hope that all of you are as excited as we are to be part of this community to help shape this industry and to build the future of data together. I think We'll even be telling these stories to our kids and grandkids about this amazing time. I know I definitely will be. Okay, so done with the boring stuff, on to the fun stuff. George is now going to uh, speak about the future of the modern data stack as we see it. So again, a very warm welcome to each and every one of you, and I hope you have a great conference full of insights, learning, and networking. And with that, I hand you over to the brains of the operation, my co-founder and our fearless CEO, please welcome George Fraser. Thank you so much, Taylor. Thanks for that great introduction. Absolutely. I'm really excited to be with you all today. Um, and uh, I'm just gonna share my screen real quick right here. Um, so very happy to be with you all. I am going to take you on a tour of the modern data stack and tell you about why the modern data stack is taking over the world. So this is it. This is what we're all here to talk about, uh, the modern data stack from bottom to top. So let's take a look at all the layers of what we have here. Firstly, 
on the bottom of the modern data stack is Fivetran. Uh, the foundation of any modern data stack is an ELT tool, not an ETL tool, that replicates the data from all the systems your business uses, from file stores like S3, from apps like Salesforce or NetSuite, events coming in through webhooks, from databases like Oracle or Postgres or MySQL. The foundation of your modern data stack is a solid replication process that creates a copy of all of these systems in your data warehouse in a normalized schema. This is the system that's gonna be the center of your data stack that everything else is gonna rotate around. Operating within that data warehouse, you're going to have a transformation tool and you're gonna have a modern trans transformation tool that orchestrates the transformation of your data within your data warehouse. And that's gonna produce your dimensional schema. This is the simplified curated view of all of the data in your business. And then at the top of the modern data stack, the most fun part, the last mile, the use cases. This is where you take this curated view of your data and you turn it into actions, you turn it into insights, you turn it into products, you turn it into anything you can imagine. This is one of the most exciting things about the modern data stack is that the simplification of the system and the inclusion of all kinds of data in one system enables all kinds of new use cases and makes it possible for companies without the infinite resources of the Googles and Facebooks of the world to do things like AI and machine learning. So let's start at the bottom of the modern data stack. This is where Fivetran lives. This is your ELT tool. ELT is a huge change to the way we do data integration. Historically, we would do transformation as part of the process of replicating the data into your data warehouse. But the lower cost and higher performance of cloud-based data warehouses has allowed us to change the order in which we do things and adopt a higher productivity workflow where we separate the concerns of replication and transformation. This is better for you and better for your analysts, but it also enables the existence of a company like Fivetran. It makes it possible to delegate the responsibility of creating a perfect copy of your data that's always up to date in your data warehouse. That's what we focus on every day at Fivetran. You've heard us say it before and I'll say it again. Our mission is to make access to data as simple and reliable as electricity. We view ourselves through that lens as a kind of utility. Uh, we're not gonna tell you what to do with the data. Uh, we're not going to uh, build a lot of UI. We're not going to build a lot of options. Our job is to build and maintain perfect connectors to every data source the businesses use. And the entire strategy of the company is built around that. We didn't raise $100 million for nothing. We did it because Fivetran has only begun to scratch the surface of this problem. Fivetran's strategy is to support every single data source that businesses use and to achieve an economy of scale that allows us to hunt down all of the corner cases, all of the failure modes, all of the tricky uh, data modeling problems in every data source uh, that we support. We can do this because Fivetran is fundamentally automated and because we gather together all of the customers who use each data source. Now, there is an alternative that some people talk about, which is the open source strategy. And I'm not here to you know, dump on other people's projects. Uh, what I will say is that I understand how Fivetran strategy works. I understand how we hunt down every corner case, how we fix every little bug, understand every little weird thing about each data source. It's fundamentally about gathering together all the customers and creating that economy of scale. I don't see how open source is ever gonna solve this problem uh, because there will never be an incentive to fix all of the little bugs and oddities 
that apply to someone else's configuration of a data source. When people build open source connectors, they build a connector that works for themselves, um, but there's no incentive to hunt down all of these other, uh, other issues. And that's why I believe our strategy of commercial ELT is the right one in the long run, not just for us, but for the customer. The second layer of the modern data stack is the data warehouse. This is the part of the modern data stack that really started the revolution. It underwent this extreme technological change that enabled everything else in the modern data stack to happen. The data warehouse that you should have at the center of a modern data stack should be based on massively parallel processing column store technology. This is a area of technology with a rich history going back to academic research, mostly in the 2000s. If you don't know about it, I highly recommend reading about it. It's really fascinating. Uh, the technology that we're getting today in data warehouses like Redshift, Snowflake, BigQuery, um, that comes uh, from a vein of, of research that goes back for uh, 20 years. A lot of it uh, is only finally getting adopted at wide scale today, um, but it's fascinating to learn about where this all came from. And it's those breakthroughs that enable that incredible query performance that you see in a modern data warehouse. The other revolution that's happened in data warehousing is the move to the cloud. Uh, so some of that fundamental technology that allows you to do queries over huge amounts of data in tiny amounts of time, that uh, has been around for a while. Uh, it's taken a long time to get uh, brought to market uh, and to become accessible to every kind of user. The move of data warehouses to the cloud is really new. And it's critical to understand that cloud-based data warehouses are not just on-prem data warehouses that have been repackaged for the cloud. The cloud is fundamentally different and better for building data warehouses because data warehouses are the use case where you most need the availability of lots of storage, lots of compute, and you need to turn that compute on and off uh, at different times of day when you run uh, different workloads, you need more or less compute. And this is the perfect use case for the cloud. Your data warehouse should be the first workload if you're an on-prem company that you move to the cloud because it's the workload that's gonna benefit the most uh, from that move to the cloud. And as we've seen the emergence of these cloud native data warehouses, uh, we've seen these huge benefits to the user. Now, I'm gonna say something a little bit controversial here, which is about data lakes. Um, data lakes is a fuzzy term. It is uh, used by different people to use, to mean different things, but I'll define what I mean by a data lake. What I mean is storing tabular data, you know, tables, rows and columns in an open source file format in object storage like S3 or Google Cloud storage possibly with some kind of transactional data lake um, manifest format sitting on top of it. In my opinion, data lakes are not a part of the modern data stack. Data lakes are legacy. Um, there are organizational quasi-political reasons why people adopt data lakes, but there are no longer technical reasons for adopting data lakes. And I know this is kind of a controversial statement, but I'll uh, explain exactly what I mean. So the kind of political reasons people have for adopting data lakes are that you already have one. That's the number one reason why people use data lakes. They already have one. Uh, a few years ago, there were great technical reasons for adopting a data lake, principally cost. Uh, the cost of storage was so much higher in the data warehouses of just a few years ago that as uh, cost optimization, it made sense to set up a separate data lake. And there are a lot of people who have data lakes 
because they've inherited them from that era. And that's a perfectly valid reason to keep them going. Um, if you have a working system, you should keep using it. You shouldn't take it out just for the sake of change. Another organizational slash political reason why people sometimes adopt data lakes is because someone at the top of the organization decides that that sounds like a good strategy and they make a chart that has a data lake in it and it's just too hard to change the chart. Uh, and so you just barrel forward with that decision. The technical reasons, however, have really gone away as data warehouses that separate compute from storage have emerged. Data warehouses that separate compute from storage have all of the advantages of data lakes and more. They give you the kind of user management. Uh, they give you uh, even better performance because they can do optimizations by controlling both the storage format and the compute format and many other advantages. Um, Data, data warehouses uh, are just fundamentally more user-friendly than data lakes are. Sometimes uh, people are hesitant about picking a single data warehouse as their primary target for storage uh, because they're afraid of vendor lock-in. But I'm here to tell you that you should not be as worried about that in a world of the modern data stack. If you use an automated ELT tool like Fivetran or uh, something you build yourself that follows uh, high automation principles and you use uh, an open source transformation layer like DBT, you can switch data warehouses much more easily than you might have uh, five years ago. The amount of vendor lock-in in a data warehouse is not zero, but it's not nearly as bad as it used to be uh, in the world of the modern data stack. And I urge you that that is not a great reason to adopt a data lake. Lastly, on data lakes, I want to say, don't worry, Fivetran is uh, a, going to support data lakes. Um, we have been working on an implementation of transactional data lakes for over a year now. Uh, so despite my opinion that they're not the optimal solution uh, in the world of the modern data stack, we uh, we are capable of listening <laughs> and uh, we are still going to support data lakes for customers who, uh, who have chosen them. But I urge you that if you're building a new system, uh, cloud-based data warehouses that separate compute from storage are the ideal center of your modern data stack. Next up is that transformation layer. I talked a little bit about this in the previous segment. The emergence of these cloud-based data warehouses where you can store all of your data and the emergence of the ELT pattern where you transform your data within your data warehouse has necessitated the creation of a completely new set of transformation tools. In the previous world, transformation was something you accomplished as part of the process of loading the data into the data warehouse. So the five trans of yesteryear were the ones doing the transformation for you. Now, Fivetran actually does do some transformation behind the scenes. When we replicate data out of, for example, a MySQL database, we're getting a change log that looks very different than the tables that you want to have in your data warehouse. And we're doing the transformation to reconstruct an exact copy of the data in your source, in your destination. And similarly, for apps like Salesforce or NetSuite, we actually do a lot of work to normalize the data before we load it into the data warehouse. But all of this is automated. None of this captures any of the questions you wanna ask of this data. And so you're still going to need to do transformation of your data just as you always have. But Fivetran being an automated tool that focuses on the E and the L in a sense has abdicated this job of transformation that previously would have been done by an ETL tool. And this has necessitated the creation of a whole new category of transformation tools that are native to the data warehouse, that are designed to transform the data from one schema to another schema in your cloud-based data warehouse. There are several great ones uh, that many Fivetran users are using today. Um, 
There's one in particular that I want to talk a little bit about, which is DBT. Um, DBT has really taken off in the last couple of years. Uh, it fundamentally is designed to bring the best practices from software engineering of continuous integration and version control into the world of analysts. It allows you to write SQL queries uh, and to then orchestrate the running of those SQL queries against your data warehouse. And it's not just a product, it's not just a company, it's an open source tool uh, with a legit open source community around it. And the fact that it is a true open source tool is uh, very important because this, if you are an analyst who's writing a lot of SQL transformations every day, this is the place where you're investing your own brain cells. And you really want to have a portable skill set that you can take with you to other companies. So I'm excited about the emergence of the entire uh, in data warehouse transformation ecosystem, but I'm particularly excited about DBT because it's bigger than just one company. And I think it's a good thing for the world for people to invest their time in learning and, and investing their own skills in open source technology rather than in proprietary tools. The last part of the modern data stack is this last mile. Uh, this is in many ways the most exciting part of the modern data stack. It's when you get to actually do something with the data. And I'm going to talk about a few different dimensions of this. So first of all, there's BI. BI was kind of the original application of data warehouses. It's still the most common thing Fivetran users do with the data we deliver. Uh, there's some great uh, BI tools out there. In the last few years, there's been some great innovation in the user experience of BI and in particular in effectively integrating the browser into the user experience of BI tools, making browser native BI possible. I think everyone at this conference probably knows a lot about BI already. And so I'm not gonna spend a bunch, a, a lot of time on that. Um, I wanna talk about some of these other use cases. So first of all, let's talk about on the right here, AI and machine learning use cases on top of the data warehouse. AI and machine learning, or as I like to call them, linear algebra, <laughs> are some of the most exciting uh, use cases on the frontier of what you can do uh, with data in a company. We've seen some of the most innovative companies in Silicon Valley, like Facebook, like Google, spend billions of dollars producing really interesting products, uh, really amazing user experiences, uh, and sometimes just really well-targeted ads using this kind of technology. But not every company has billions of dollars to spend creating custom data pipelines to support AI and machine learning workloads. In order for the broader world of companies to do this kind of work, they're going to need to leverage the modern data stack that they've already built to support all these other use cases to do this kind of workload. Now, uh, you will find if you try to run tools like, uh, like Spark, like NumPy, like, uh, Py, uh, like PyTorch or TensorFlow on top of data that you have stored in a data warehouse like Snowflake or BigQuery, you're going to find that the biggest uh, bottleneck if you are working with large data sets is going to actually be the movement of data between systems. Uh, it's not the uh, linear algebra. It's, uh, it's not really even the size of the data. It's the dang JDBC connection serializing everything from one system to another. And we have customers who have set up complete parallel data lakes and object storage just to work around this slow connection. Uh, there, are, there are multiple ways to work around this problem today, um, but uh, one of the technologies that I'm most excited about 
that's emerging over the last couple of years and that I hope will gain more traction over the next couple of years is a technology uh, that not many have heard about, but I will tell anyone who will listen about called Apache Arrow. Uh, Arrow is a serialization format. It is a common serialization format that allows different systems uh, to exchange data at very high speeds and in parallel. And it is the ideal solution to this problem of I want to do non-SQL linear algebra based workloads on top of the data that lives in my data warehouse. Uh, several data warehouses have uh, begun implementation of Arrow uh, as an exchange format. We, uh, in BigQuery uh, and in Snowflake, there is some, some basic implementation, but there's still more work to be done in fully implementing uh, this protocol across the ecosystem. And if you are a user of one of these systems that wants to do uh, these kind of machine learning workloads on top of the data that lives in these systems, I urge you to urge your, uh, your contacts at these companies to implement this technology, because this is going to be the key to making the modern data stack useful for AI and machine learning workloads. The next exciting new use case that we're seeing uh, on top of the modern data stack is that one in the middle, taking action. Taking action on data is really the frontier of data warehousing. It's funny, the term data warehousing really makes it sound like it's something that kind of sits there and is static and you look at it and it doesn't do very much. Um, but taking action means closing the loop from, from data to something happening in the world. It means instead of your data warehouse producing a bar chart and someone looking at this bar chart and then going and doing something, it means that a machine actually goes directly uh, from the insight from the result of the query into doing something out in the world. We have many customers doing variations of this concept today. We have customers who use Fivetran delivered data in their data warehouse to run payroll. Uh, it happens that these companies uh, running payroll is very complex. They need a lot of data to decide how much to pay each contractor. And so they actually do that on top of their data warehouse. Similarly, we have customers who run billing using this kind of workflow. Um, I've talked to people in the DBT Slack community who are using their data warehouse to do intrusion detection. Uh, so you can uh, look, uh, if you wanna know whether someone is doing something they shouldn't uh, inside your network or inside your IT infrastructure, very often, in order to figure that out, the best way to do it is to look at many different sources of data and to discover anomalous patterns. And where better to find many different sources of data than your data warehouse? Similarly, uh, I've talked to people who are using their data warehouse to detect marketing regressions. Uh, so if you are a B2C business and you are uh, running uh, on thin uh, margins on top of your cost of customer acquisition, that, uh, that customer acquisition workflow needs to be very highly optimized. And if you change something about your ad buying strategy or your website or your onboarding flow, and uh, it, it changes the conversion rates of that flow, uh, the difference between discovering that in a day and discovering that in 15 minutes can be a million dollars. And the data warehouse can be a great place to get a view of everything that's going on and figure out uh, not only how well your funnel is working, but to actually take action on that immediately in real time. As a new frontier of data warehousing, taking action is somewhat of the wild west right now. The way people actually accomplish this is a mix of uh, home-built 
processes that read from the data warehouse and call some API somewhere, and some new tools that are emerging, like, for example, Census, uh, which is one of the sponsors of this conference, and uh, we jokingly refer to as reverse five trend, <laughs> takes the data out of your data warehouse and back into other systems. So uh, when taking action, people will often reach for message brokers, in particular Kafka. And I'm gonna say something else controversial here, which is that you should first try to use your data warehouse rather than uh, message brokers like Kafka to build these kinds of action-based systems. This may come as a surprise to people. Um, taking action based on data is traditionally not the realm of data warehouses, but um, it turns out that modern cloud-based data warehouses uh, are uh, a great pragmatic compromise that is a lot easier to operate than a message broker that allows you to do things like easily scan whole tables, easily do joins. Um, and now with the emergence of stream processing, um, particularly in Snowflake, uh, where you can create, use tasks and streams to process data incrementally, you can do the kinds of workflows that previously you would have needed to hire an entire software engineering team and build a stream processing system on top of a message broker like Kafka. Now you can do with a SQL query inside of a data warehouse. And these systems are just fundamentally so much easier to build and so much easier to maintain. And now, uh, the data warehouses can can you can, are are getting so um, efficient at doing incremental processing that you can build systems with end to end latencies in seconds. Uh, you can't do milliseconds in a data warehouse, but seconds is achievable. And this opens up a whole bunch of use cases that you can effectively pull from the world of software engineering and very expensive, difficult to operate systems into the world of SQL and data warehousing, uh, declarative, the declarative world, um, where it's just gonna be so much easier to build and iterate on these use cases. And I think this is really one of the uh, most exciting areas of the modern data stack is pulling in some of these more engineering, prod, taking action workflows into, uh, into the modern data stack. And that's why one of the most exciting uh, elements of Fivetran's roadmap, and I'm just gonna jump all the way back here and uh, take a look at the overview here. One of the most exciting elements of Fivetran's roadmap over the next couple of years is latency. So uh, if you want to build a workflow that takes action based on data that's coming from all of these sources, you need this entire system from top to bottom to have an end-to-end -end latency in the seconds or tens of seconds. Now, Fivetran today, best case scenario, you can do one minute syncs. And really everything has to be going right for that to happen. Um, however, I will remind you that this was not always so. <laughs> when Fivetran got our first few customers, the fastest we could sync was once a day. And shortly thereafter, we made it possible to sync once an hour. Um, and then about a year later, we added 15 minutes. And a year after that, we added five minutes. My point is, that latency is something we've been working on every year that we've existed. Uh, there's nothing easy about it. In order to make the system faster, we have to optimize every element of our pipeline from top to bottom, but we're not done. There is no latency that is too low. And with the new features that are being developed in the data warehouses, latencies of seconds and tens of seconds are fundamentally possible. And we're working hard at Fivetran uh, to keep battling every element of the pipeline, 
uh, keep battling down that latency number because we understand uh, that lower latency is going to enable all of these exciting use cases. And lower latency is an example of our favorite kind of feature. It's the kind of feature where there's nothing new in the UI, there's nothing new to configure. Um, one day you log in and there's another tick on the sync frequency uh, bar. You don't need to change your schema. Uh, you don't need to build new pipelines. The same system you know and love just works faster. Um, that's our piece of the puzzle. Uh, every other element of this stack is similarly working on this problem. In the data warehouse layer, I talked about tasks and streams and, and how important those are. Um, right now, this is easiest to do in Snowflake, but I have no doubt that the other cloud-based data warehouses won't be far behind. Um, in the uh, transformation layer, we're seeing really exciting things happen in materialized views, which are a way to uh, compute a SQL query incremental. And then in the output layer, you have uh, tools like census, but you also have um, fundamental change data capture features being built by the data warehouses. So that's where I hope this is all going. Uh, the modern data stack has taken over a lot of use cases already, and I'm excited to see it take over more. We're working hard at Fivetran to build the infrastructure to make that possible. And we have a really fun lineup of speakers that are gonna tell you more about what they're doing with the modern data stack.